What's going on guys, Vic be back with the Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, it's really for the customer, it's gonna be a tutorial on how to set up your new Captain America 3 terabyte PC build going into your arcade cabinet. I will make this public as well for any future customers. Unbox it and let's get going. Sheesh. Again, this is really for the customer, but I'm gonna make it public because why not? Be sure to follow me on all the socials, Vic VP, Vic underscore VP. Uh, again, this is mostly for the customer, but if you're watching and you wanna see how this kind of stuff works, be my guest. So again, send you two boxes, bud. We have the control panel here with some wire. I'm gonna have it inside, tucked away. Uh, again, I'm gonna go through the whole thing, and then you're also going to have a separate box with the PC inside of it. Uh, again, also you do have your N64 controllers, we'll talk about that later on, and I will have also a keyboard and mouse. So, basics, let's first get the control panel in, let's take a look at the control panel, and I'll tell you all the wires and stuff, I have everything labeled out, uh, and then we'll work on the computer. We'll talk about all the stuff added and all that, but again, let's focus on this. Uh, again, I'm gonna have this tucked away inside, nice and neat. I will put, I don't wanna put a zip tie, um, I'll just kind of have it nice sponged in and then taped down like how you sent me stuff. So we have a couple of things going on here. You do have a couple of USBs which you already saw and know. There's a new power cord connector thing to that. And then I do have your regular SATA connection that was going to your PC power supply. And I did add my 12-volt uh, power brick just in case. Again, everything tested. Your connector here that you already have I rewired it according to how the pictures are. So you do have your individual coin one slot is player one coin, player two coin slot is player two. Then you also have the power for your LEDs and stuff. I am going to throw in LEDs as well. Um, I'm not sure if it's gonna fit your cabinet, it should, but I'm gonna give you four white LEDs and four yellow LEDs for your coin door. Uh, if it works out, awesome. If it doesn't, it's a-okay. It's I have a ton of LEDs. Now you do see now I have the joysticks here. Again, I suggested these. I'm gonna send you these, and I'm also gonna send you the ones you sent me, which is the black sticks, and I have the new, um, everything's new. So I bought four new joysticks, and you have now the new micro switches inside. Uh, inside of one of the micro switch bags, the, the joystick bags, is the LEDs for your coin door. I hope, I'm hoping it fits. Uh, but again, if not, it's a-okay. Again, everything is basically stock how you send it to me, minus the new dedicated four-way. And then we have the four coin buttons in the front and the double uh, USB extenders in the front for the N64 controller. So definitely, I would first definitely bolt this down into your cabinet, and then we'll worry about connections and such. Now looking inside, you do have your three points for the bolts. I have everything kind of zip tied away from the center bolt here. I'm assuming that there should be a bolt there uh, that goes to your cabinet. So you have your basic stuff here. On the right side here, I do have a, pa a PC power button. Definitely all the way to the right. It should not interfere with your cabinet. Um, but yes, everything now is basically good to go. Bolted down. Again, you can just move these wires out of the way. Get your control panel secured and then we're gonna look at the USB connections and such. So a couple of new things from when you sent it to me, we do have a Zinmo uh, connect controller here, that's for player one and two. That's nice and neat, you shouldn't have to worry about anything here. Just double check, make sure all the connections are here, but I have everything zip tied down so it shouldn't come loose in transit, but you never know how transit is. There's your new dedicated four way, that's basically in parallel, it's lined up and connected with the player one joystick. So there you got that. Again, now we'll look at the USBs that are coming in here. Again, I don't know which way, it doesn't really matter which way you have like your PC oriented in the bottom, but again, I just wanna look at the actual USB cords. I don't want to zip tie these all together. Normally I would, but in your situation, I just don't know which way is gonna go what, so I didn't wanna zip tie these down together. Uh, I do write like a five-year-old, and fortunately I didn't have my label maker with me, but every USB cord is labeled. It doesn't matter how it goes in the PC, but I'll show you how I've been having it done. Uh, so you got the big one here. This is your trackball that has like the extra PS2 controller thing here. So we have the trackball, 
We have the Zinmo, player one and player two. You have your player four and your player three. So you have still, like you sent me, four USB connections. You do now also have this black and red. This is PC power. This is basically the power button so you don't have to reach into the cabinet to power on your PC. Uh, other than that, you do have your power here. This was already going to the SATA. If you decide to remove that PC power supply, no worries, you have the 12 volt brick. Don't plug the 12 volt brick and the SATA in, obviously, so just whatever you do, do not do that. But other than that, you're set. Let's look at the computer. I forgot also in addition to your regular uh, USBs you have, there are two extra ones. They're labeled extender. Um, basically these are for the front USB connections there. So you really have in total six USB connections, the Zenmo, player three, player four, trackball, and then the double extenders, the USB extenders in the front. Sorry about that. Now let's head to the PC. So check it out, here's your Dell Optiplex. There is four USB ports in the front. I only have the extenders plugged into that. I'm gonna show you all the connections and all that. You also have the headphone jack in the front if you have an amp, so you'll be using that, or there is a headphone jack in the back. There's only one HDMI connection right here that's going to the graphics card. Awesome. I have your keyboard uh, USB. I will actually put this inside with the keyboard box. Uh, this way it doesn't get ruined in transit. So you do have another USB here that's for your keyboard, mouse, and keyboard. Uh, but HDMI goes into here. As far as four of the USBs, I do use the bottom row right here. And then you can see there, you have the top. There's another actual USB port I have for you. There is a wireless Wi-Fi card that I got for you that could plug into this USB here. Without further ado, let's get connected. Now also, I forgot to mention, you have this double wire here. No need to worry, this is kind of secured in. You can't pull this out. You're not messing with any connections inside. This right here is modified to your motherboard. This is for the PC power button to your control panel. This way you could just you know push the power button and it'll turn on your PC. Let's get cracking, let's load it up. I'm tucked away in the corner, but it's A-OK. -okay. I'm gonna spin the PC around just to show you the connections that I'm gonna do first. Again, it doesn't matter what USBs go where. Everything's already programmed, so no need to worry about it. But if you want to follow how I had it, that's fine. So this little one is going to be inside your keyboard. We have the top left port for the keyboard. Let's grab our USBs coming from the control panel. Try to always keep it nice and neat. Yes, there is slack on them because I'm not sure you know, how far into the cabinet it'll reach. So I didn't want to cut anything. I just wanted to give you a good amount of slack. So I'm gonna utilize these four USB ports right here on the bottom. And basically from left to right, the first port I did put the trackball in. So again, labeled trackball with my five-year-old handwriting. We've got the trackball here. Second port right next to it, I have the Zinmo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Zinmo player one and player two. It's the one that has an X on it. X Zinmo. Then next port I have player three, so P3. Make sure it goes in the right way, good. And then we have player four. Notice also I don't have the PC powered in right now, so we'll keep going. Now while you're here, might as well connect in the PC power plug. So there's only one way this could go in, so obviously male to female on the reds, male to female on the blacks. All set, now what we have to do right now is we have to do the HDMI, the power, and the extenders. Again, the extenders here I have in the front. We'll turn, give the PC a nice little spin. Doesn't matter which one goes where, I utilize the top ones. Doesn't have too much slack as the other ones, but you should have enough. Player one, not player one, extender one, and then extender two. Again, doesn't matter which one goes what, it's just your extender there. I'll show you the rear. Cool, so you can still see the USBs are in. Again, we have our PC here. Again, this is something where you kind of set it and forget it. HDMI cord, again, it's the bottom slot right here. There's no HDMIs here at all, so no need to worry, there's only one HDMI cord. We got that in, and we have the PC power in. The PC might turn on or make a noise, but it really shouldn't turn on fully. It'll probably turn off, but 
You're good. If you see that little green light on, that means you got power. Cool, so now just to be safe, I have my TV on. I'm gonna just kind of plug back in the PC just so we can see exactly what happens uh, if you give power to the cabinet. I don't know if you're gonna have your cabinet on 24 seven. You might be like me where you turn off the cabinet you know, entirely and then when you're ready to play, you plug it in. So I do have the screen on. Nothing, the PC's not powered on. So now I can basically come here on the bottom right, the back right, press it one time, and then just give it some time and it will boot up. Just gotta give it a few. If you have your screen on, be sure you're on the right HDMI connection. You will see the Dell logo. Also TVs usually show like no signal. Mine doesn't show no signal right now, but again, it will turn on, just let it do its thing. That's that notification. <laughs> and yes, as you can see, it's gonna go through its thing. It's gonna boot up. That was that whole Amber Alert one. <laughs> and again, as your request, I have the system set up to after 30 seconds, it will boot into hyperspin. So right now, you could grab your mouse. You have your mouse, you even have your trackball. You can see the mouse working there. There's nothing you could do right now. The system will automatically launch on its own after 30 seconds. I'm gonna give you the basic kind of tutorial and then we'll go in depth. I'll talk about the joysticks and all that. But again, I don't really wanna to cut too much. I'd rather you see it live in action. Uh, you could also, if you want later on, you could connect to the internet. You don't need to do it right away. Um, you have your Wi-Fi dongle. Internet's not really used unless I need to team viewer in or if you wanna play fight game. But as you can see right now, Hyperspin has loaded. Player one and player two you could use to navigate. I usually suggest player one. I'm gonna lower my screen. Cool, so as you request it, basically once the PC turns on, it is on the main main set. Again, you do have quite a wheel. Like I mentioned to you before, there's main ROMs, there's no clones here. You have all the ROMs, and there's a four player only list. And then you have Naomi, Sega Ring Edge, just Techno Parrot. You got a couple of categories like the Capcom and Neo Geo. I got your Daphne, Ice Cold Beer. You got your pinball stuff and such. So again, we went from wanting only MAME to, I don't even know how many games you have, I have to take a look. But basically, once this thing first boots, it will automatically go here. If you're very simple, you hold down button one on player one, it'll bring you into the menu. That's your enter. You have to hold it down at least two to three seconds, then it'll enter. Exit on top is your escape, it goes back. So again, same thing, you have to hold it down for two to three seconds. I have that on purpose. So right now, if I just press button one, nothing's happening. That's because you have to hold it down. It's gotta be a long press hold, and then it's there. Again, I do it on purpose because so many times you might accidentally press the button. Um, before we play a game, I'll go into the favorites list because you sent me your favorites list. Right now you're in the main ROMs. You're gonna see every ROM that's not a clone here. Again, I don't have all the artwork, but that's A-OK. -okay. Majority of it, I'll be probably, probably good 85 to 90% of the artwork is there. Now instead of you coming here and going, okay, I wanna play Pac-Man and then searching, you could actually press the top row button three, that's the blue button. It'll bring you up this favorites list. On the view favorites, you can do the hold long press button one, and that's your enter. This is the entire list that you sent me. Everything is there. One or two games are not there, such as Super Missile Command. Uh, I didn't have that. Apparently it's like a, a ROM hack, I guess. But other than that, I would probably say your entire list that you wanted is there. So it's much easier to go with this. This is your favorites list. I'll tell you how you could add a game to later on. There's also a couple of games that you didn't want, but I also put it on the list. Such as, for example, you wanted Marble Madness 1 but I also have Marble Madness 2. So if you wanted to play Marble Madness 2 also, I have it on the list. Again, I'll show you how to remove something from there. So let's do something basic. You definitely wanted some Donkey Kong action. So I can either hold up and down, and as you can see, we're there. Luckily, the favorites list is not too big, but I believe you might be adding more games to it. But for right now, let's launch some Donkey Kong. Button one, long hold, at least two to three seconds you get your loading screen. Big thing is that once you see that screen, let it do its thing. And we got Donkey Kong. Also, you do have your bezel, so it is a vertical game. It looks great. If you don't like the bezels, you'll let me know. I will help you. We can make a full screen stretch, which I don't think you really want, but if you want it, you let me know. In the front here, you do have your coin button. You also have it to your coin door as well. 
and yes, this will save your highest scores. Games like this, your joystick player one and your dedicated four-way, they're, they're connected in parallel. So either one will work. This is a dedicated four-way game though, so I do suggest that you use the four-way joystick for this. And as you can see, again, I have the music low, the screen is low, but we're able to play it. Now, the big thing now, when it comes to this, for example, to jump, I am using this button here, but let's say you want to modify it, maybe you want to use player two as a jump, I'll show you that real quick. Now, this is really for MAME games. You basically take your keyboard, you can press tab, you're gonna get a nice little screen there. You're gonna go into input settings, enter, and then input assignments, this system. That means this game specifically. If I enter into there, we can see there, you do have your star and your coins and all that, but the big thing is that there's a player one, button one. What's very cool with this menu is that it's only showing you buttons that are used in this specific game. So as you can see, it does have button one. I'm gonna press enter, and again, it's kind of tough because we don't have a dedicated button, but we could do button two, which is really player two start. If I press enter again, I could bring it back to give you button one. And now you can see that there's two options. If you want, you can even do this button here. I'll do that one there. And now you have three buttons for this jump button. So if I press tab, it'll bring it back. I'll put some coins in, I'll press start. And now you're good. So now you have basically one, two, three buttons that will do the same thing, which is jump. That's what's great with MAME. That's also what's great with a PC-based system. You can modify on the go and such. So same thing if you want to play a Galaga. You might be like me where you wanted to, you know, as you can see, look, see, there you go. Again, I didn't do every single game. That'll be up to you because there's a lot of games, but majority of it, it's awesome. It works great. And yes, high scores do save. So once you get past 7650, it'll be over. Now you're done playing, exit. For main arcade, it's one quick exit button and you're back. You have now regained access and control to your joysticks. Awesome. Now, just for fun, we'll do it again. Let's run some Galaga. Again, long press button one, and you're good. When you get into consoles like N64, which we'll do later on, you just gotta give it a second. I should actually say for PC games, some games might take a little bit, not long, might take a couple more seconds to launch and such. So right now, Galaga, this right here is the real ROM booting up. That's how it is in the arcades. That is my score of the 10,000. Uh, so, or I should say 104,000. Uh, I hope you beat it. But same instance here. For example, again, we're gonna be able to play. Again, you could use the joystick, the dedicated four-way, but I don't have any fire button set up here. This game, honestly, you could use the regular joystick, right? But hey, Vic, I wanna use the dedicated four-way. No worries. We grab our keyboard, tab, input settings, we enter. And again, you use the arrow keys to navigate. So input this system. And again, it's showing you only the, the buttons that are used in this specific game here. So it looks like player two, surprisingly, player two button one is also used. So if I wanted to change button one for player one, P1 button one, I hover over it, I press enter. There you go. And I'm gonna press, I'm gonna do player two start for that. I'm gonna hit enter again, and I'm gonna press player one button one. And just for kicks, I'm gonna do player two button one. Awesome, you can see the three there. Now if you messed up, all you have to do is press delete while you're hovered over that specific section. If you hit delete and then delete again, it'll bring it back to stock. So don't worry about messing it up and all that. Uh, I right now, no, we're gonna continue. I'm going to set this up for player two start. And since it's gonna go to you, I might as well be safe and I'm gonna set these up too as well. And awesome, I hit tab, make sure it's good. There you go. And boom, I'm able to play. Now the big thing I don't know it doesn't work for this game, awesome. Sometimes you know like games when you start like Street Fighter, if you play first with player one, and then you press player two start, it might bring in player two. But as you can see, cool. Now worst case, I could also just keep using this joystick here. And we are good to go, we are enjoying some Galaga. Again, sound to there, that is my high score. It's not that great, but I hope you beat it. That's it, very simple, MAME is simple. Again, I'm gonna tap exit. It brings you back to your favorites list. This is your favorites list. Now, for example, um, I gave you, you wanted, for example, 1942. I gave you all 1940 
X. You know, I got 1941, 42, 43, there's two 43s, another 43, a 44. So now you might be saying, hey Vic, you know what, man? I don't want this game. How do I remove it? Now we're gonna get into the favorites list. Now, keep in mind, you are right now currently in your favorites list. Vic, I don't want this game. That's not my favorite. Very simple. Again, top row, player one, top row, button three. That's the blue button here. If I press that, I go down and I have the option to remove from favorites. So if I hold down button one, it is now gone. Uh, again, if I want to exit from this menu here, I have to hold exit. That's your escape key. Vic, it's still there. If you hold down exit again, it's going to bring you back to the main screen. I'm gonna enter in. Again, this is showing you right now though the main ROM. This is the entire list. You have to go into your favorites list. I'm gonna press button three. I'm gonna to go to view favorite games. And now, as you can see, that 45 game I had is gone. Vic, I wanna add it back. Cool, no worries. Again, this is the favorites list. Now keep in mind, this favorites list is only located inside of main ROMs. I'm gonna enter in. So it's kind of like sub-menus. You're in now the main menu for these main ROMs. So you're gonna have everything here. There's about 12,000 games, let's say, here, okay? I'm gonna go back to that 1945 game because I feel like you might want it. I hovered over it, button three, that blue button. Going down, I'm gonna add it to my favorites. Good, now if I wanna go to my favorites list, I could view my favorites list and I'm there. It's all here. Awesome, let's do it again. Holding down the exit is going to bring you back to the main screen. This is where you can pick your consoles and stuff, okay? You're going to go into main ROMs. And again, in here, there's more games, obviously, than your favorites list. You got two on two, 2020 baseball. Awesome. I want to go to my favorites list, Vic. I don't want to see all this. Okay. Button three. Hold down button one. And now you're in your favorites list. Hope I didn't lose you. We're still doing some basic stuff. Again, it will get some time to get used to, but... No worries. Again, if I hold down the exit again, it is going to bring you back right here. Now, the big thing again, I have main ROMs, and then I have another category for all ROMs. Inside of this category is a lot of duplicates. You're going to see logos get duplicated. You're going to see, like, see, for example, there's three pangs. That's duplicates. That's why I have all this for, it's, it's all of them. You're rarely in this honesty. You're most likely going to be inside of the main ROMs. Why do I have all ROMs? You never know. You might find a clone that you might want to play inside. So again, I'm right now inside of the main ROMs. Let's talk about navigation now, okay? Again, this is hyperspin. I don't want you standing here. Let's say I want to play some WWF. Let's say that. We're going to do some WrestleFest, right? So I right now, it's in alphabetical order. You can see the name here. I'm under A. Vic, if I hold this joystick down, I'm going to be here all day. No worries. There's a couple things you could do. If you tap left, or if you tap right, it's gonna to go to the next letter. So B, C, D. If I go left, it's gonna go back a letter. So C, B. Awesome. Vic, I can go to W. If you hold left or right, it's gonna bring up the letter. You can go left for previous letter. You can go right for next letter. I'm gonna to go to W. I'm gonna long press button one. That's your enter. And now we're under W. W, W, F though, it's kind of closer to the end of W as far as alphabetical order, I'm actually going to go to Y or X, and I found WrestleFest. I want to play WrestleFest. Awesome. Long press button one, and you're good. Now remember, this is a four-player game, so this is set to four-player. I'm going to talk about the emulators that I'm using, uh, but you're up and running cool. Put your coins in, and you can play. I'm done playing. Exit out, and you're back. Again, this is right now the entire list. You don't have, you have those games as your favorites, but for example, you don't have uh, this World Series this season. That's not in your favorites list. Again, there's well over 12,000 main arcade games alone here. I don't want to go through 12,000 games. That is why you have your favorites list. That's your favorites list. Again, I could go up and you can see there you requested these three wrestling games and it's there. Awesome. Now the big thing to understand with this favorites list, this favorites list is only located inside of this main ROMs category. For example, if I go into Arcade Schmucks, you're not going to find that favorites list here. I actually have none here, but if I go to view favorite list or favorite games, nothing happens because I have no favorites here. Again, your favorites list that you have 
It is in specifically that main ROMs. Again, you have some categories here. So for example, if you wanted to just see all the trackball games, that is here. Again, you do not have any favorites in this. If you want to make favorites, that's fine. Same kind of scenario. I know you like the Millipede. Button three, add to favorites. And I could either view my favorites or if I hold down the exit, I'll be back. So now if I go now to my favorites list here, I only have one game. So you see a bunch of Millipede. Again, it's a favorites list for each category, which is pretty cool, honestly, I do like that. Just keep in mind that your main wheel has it. Um, what else, what else we wanna do? Let's talk about real quick the two player versus the four player emulator. Inside of this main ROMs, there's a specific main emulator I have. Basically, long story short, this main emulator has player one, two, three, four. So you will see two player games, you will see four player games, but that this ROM, this emulator is set for player one to be here. Now, for example, a game like WrestleFest, or I really should say like TMNT or NBA Jam, normally it's player one, two, three, four. If I launch, and I will do it right now, why not? I could either go to my favorites list or I'm gonna take the long route and I'm gonna look for NBA Jam in the entire list. Basically, if I launch NBA Jam, it's gonna be set up for player one and two to be on the same team, and then player three and four is on different teams. So right now we're gonna enter some coins. Let's press start. So as you can see there, see player one, player two, this is player three, and that's player four. Really, for NBA Jam, it's not correct. You might be saying, Vic, what are you doing? No, I suggest highly, if you're gonna play any four player games, you do wanna launch it inside of this four player uh, main section. This section I have player one, two, three, and four. It is mapped out correctly. So again, if I now go back to NBA Jam, it will be correct. Um, that's one thing I don't really see anybody else doing, but as you can see, it happened. So again, if I'm here, just like the real NBA Jam, this player is that one, player two, which is really player one, that's where you know people are like, Vic, what are you talking about? That's what it is here. So again, inserting coins. Now it's set and good. So again, any four player game you plan to play, I highly suggest you play it inside of this four player arcade section. Uh, and you got them all there. You got Showtime, you got the Blitz section, uh, Rampage, you got the WWF game there. Again, any four player game if you plan to play multiplayer, Team NT, The Simpsons, I would suggest you playing it here. For example, if I launch, this is where, again, some people don't know, but I feel like you are an avid arcade player, so you would know. If you know TMNT, if you know, even, for example, Captain America, I should load that up next. I will do that now, actually. Um, Lisa, or Marge, or I should say, yeah, no, it's Marge. Marge is here. That's why that is set up like that. If I wanted to play Lisa, I have to go to player four. That is why it's important if you're gonna play these four player games, I highly suggest you play it inside of this four player one. You have a Captain America cabinet, why not? I should have started with that. Let's play some Captain America and the Avengers. Again, long press button one, you'll be back. So really, if I wanted to play, I'm, not, I'm gonna butcher a character's name, but apparently, okay, I, don't, I don't know who it is. I was gonna say The Flash, but I'm gonna be off, now you're making fun of me. <laughs> Again, if I want to be Captain America, though, I have to be where Captain America is. Awesome. And it works. See? If I'm going to be Iron Man, awesome. That's how it should be. That, again, is why I strongly suggest you load four-player games, four-player main, inside of that four-player arcade. Now, real quick, let's talk about the beauty of the dedicated four-way, because you might be going, Vic, what did you do? You kind of butchered the cabinet. No, 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 don't worry. I got your back. I'm going to show you this dedicated four-way. I'm going to go into your favorites list. I know you wanted golden tea. I am an awful golden tea player, but for this purpose, we're going to launch golden tea. Again, I'm inside your favorites list right now. I'll go with the newer one. Let's go to golden tea 2K. Long press button one. Awesome. Now, the big thing about this dedicated four-way, underneath the dust cover here, there's a very, like, it's a barrel. Um, it might be tough for you. If it is kind of a hassle, you could remove the ball top here. I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna bring you in closer. Let me do that real quick. Let's bring you in while this game loads. I'm gonna show it to you with the ball top on first. But again, right underneath here, I hope the camera sees it. There's this barrel here. That basically, it 
clicks up. So if you get your fingers in the right way, the kiddo's there. If you get your fingers in the right way, I'm able to do it with one hand. I'm just gonna do it real quick. The joystick pops out. So this is the barrel here. So it's gotta be like a piston. It's gotta pull up and then you pull out. If it is troublesome, you could just remove the ball top and remove the dust cover and then you could just put it in like that. So this doesn't just go in like this, it's gonna come out. You have to pull up, kind of like a shot. You pull up and drop. That's not going nowhere, okay? Again, if you don't, you know, you might have fat fingers like I do. Might be a little bit of, of a headache, you just gotta move that out. But basically, once you have it in, it is in. And again, it's not gonna go nowhere. Again, if I want to take it out, I kind of move the dust cover up and I could pull out. Now we could enjoy some golden tea. So golden tea is loaded, we're gonna insert some coins in. I can now use the trackball. I'm gonna do a one player game. Button one, or it might be start, it says to use all the coins, we'll bump up the volume on this. You're gonna never really touch the Windows computer, but the keyboard has the option for function and all that. I suck at golden tea, so um, let's see. Uh, I wanna change my, again, it's just like the real golden tea, so I can move the trackball. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this driver here. I'm gonna give it a nice drive. I'm gonna pull back and launch. So that is why I removed the dedicated four-way. You would have smacked your hand against it. You would have been really pissed at me. <laughs> but I'm in the trees. <laughs> again, beautiful. That spin on that trackball is great. There is a way, again, you, could, you have to remove the bottom of it to clean the ball. I did put the oil and stuff on it, uh, so you should be A-OK -okay for at least a couple of months. Where is the, where am I going? I'm in the trees. Get the chainsaw. Get my chainsaw, I'm, I'm hitting the trees. I'm not, I'm not a golden tea player, but as you can see, it does work. You can probably put this somewhere on top. Uh, I did want to try like a, a key ring, but all in all, it does work. I do want to play one more game, which is, oh, you don't have it on your favorites though, but you might want to add it now that I'm mentioning it and that is Capcom Bowling. So again, I'm gonna go here, I'll go to C, I'll drop down. And it's great, because right now we've only done so far Main Arcade. <laughs> we haven't even done any other systems, we'll do Capcom Bowling. Again, long press button one, let it load. Me and the kiddo love Capcom Bowling. It's a very fun game, especially when you have a lot of people to play with. Uh, it gets very competitive. So I don't have, uh, oh, I actually have my daughter here. <laughs> I have Ava there, she's ninth place, so you can try to beat her on that. That's a two-year-old score, but it's really me and her together. But as you can see, you got some of that, and boom. I like your trackball because if you're not going straight, it does go according to the game, uh, according to the ball, so you do want to do that. You have your hooks and all that. Come on, I gotta do at least one strike to kind of make it look good. Ah, almost. But yes, there you go. Awesome, the trackball and the dedicated four-way. You will get used to it. I have this detachable joystick and it's a thing of beauty. Now, in all honesty, I would highly suggest once you get this, get into the groove of the arcade stuff. Uh, you know, playing the trackball games, the shmups and all that. Mainly focusing on these here in the beginning. It might be a little overwhelming, but trust me, I feel like after a couple of days in time, you will get used to the system. I have a lot of stuff for you on this. Naomi Model 3, Kato Type X is modern kind of emulators such as Street Fighter V Type Arcade. That's the actual arcade version of it. Some of it is high grab, you got Tekken 7 Faded Retribution. That is a arcade version of this game. Again, you're gonna have so many, there's so much going on. You have Capcom Classics, I even have Neo Geo. Uh, if you wanna just play Neo Geo, Ice Cold Beer is great. Uh, you'll watch the whole video on that. You got your pinballs and stuff. Now we're getting into the consoles, okay? Consoles, I feel like you might message me later on and say, hey Vic, I gotta get a controller. But basically, I have these consoles mapped out to the actual arcade stick. So again, NES, you have the entire NES library. It's all here. Same thing, you could make a favorites list here if you didn't wanna go through all the games, but it's up to you. Again, for me, I'm not really a fan of playing these consoles on arcade sticks. You had enough room on your drive, I figured why not you might be like most of my customers where they just wind up buying a controller. Essentially, yes, you could map it out to your N64 controller, but I'll let you make the call. You can call me for that. But basically, yes, you could play some Mario 3. Again, long press button one. And again, I have it working with the arcade sticks. Also note the N64 controllers are not connected. We connect those when we're ready to play. Again, you have your start here. 
And then remember, this system also utilizes the select. Select is your coin. Uh, so depending on, you know, once you kind of figure out your buttons, it's really B and A and then B and A turbo on the top. But yeah, you're able to play the retro stuff. Long press exit will bring you back. So that's your escape key. You have to long press it, not a tap. It's a long press. And as you can see, we're rocking. Let's talk about N64 now. So N64, you have the entire library. It's funny you messaged me like, can I get more? Like, yes, I already got you, bro. <laughs> so the N64 one, you have it all there. The big thing we wanna make sure with this N64, we're gonna plug in the N64 controller before we launch the game. So uh, I do wanna definitely, I showed it off in the actual overview of the video. I do wanna show you your wrestling game that you wanted. So I'm in W, but I could go to the next letter and then go up because WWF, why not? Uh, let's do your game first because it does throw an error. It's not your, it's not an issue for your PC or anything. It just apparently it's a well-known error from this, the guy that made it. So grabbing your N64 controller, kind of, you know, nice and neatly kind of tucked it away. We all did it as a kid where we did the X. Don't do that. <laughs> you ruined wires. So right now, again, I'm going to get ready. I'm going to plug in this. The USB port here, just don't force it in. You know, if, if you feel like it's restraining you, then it's not in the right way. But I'm in, you do hear a Windows chime, but I still control with the arcade stick. I'm gonna long press button one. Again, I'm doing this mod one first. So you're gonna see, like you see like the screen right now, like Vic, what happened? Your mod game, it does this. Let it do its thing. You could put two players in. If you are gonna do two players, plug it in before you start the game. That's basically it. Right now, because this controller is in, the emulator started and now it recognizes this controller. So as you can see, I'm able to use this controller to play this game. Awesome. Again, depending on how far you get, and it's always happened, I wanna do it live for you. This way, while you wait for your control panel, you'll be able to you know, see what's gonna happen and what to anticipate. You basically could play just as it was. I, yeah, great, I did Hulk Hogan versus Hulk Hogan, right? Here. Uh, awesome. If I'm done playing, I don't disconnect the controller, I could hold down ex exit or escape. You're gonna get that. There's no way around it. Basically, you're gonna grab your mouse and you're just gonna click okay. This mouse though is the type where you have to kind of click to wake it up. And you can do it on your panel. Your panel is pretty good. And uh, find your mouse. And I'm gonna press okay. And then I now regain focus for everything. It's just your game. Everybody apparently has that error message. Uh, again, if I wanted to play now some WrestleMania 2000, I have my controller in, long press on that, and now the standard regular games, you're not gonna get that pop-up. As you can see, it will boot right into the game. Playing some GoldenEye before was very cool. Again, I do love the N64 controller. Awesome. This kind of stuff, these regular games aside your one mod works. If I hold down the exit, I'm not gonna get some red pop-up, it's gonna bring me right back. And you're good. N64. Now the big thing before, if you wanna now play a different game or a different console or MAME Arcade, I highly suggest you disconnect this before launching another game. It might basically confuse the, the emulator and think that this is now player one. So, okay, not too bad, awesome. Again, now I put away the N64 controller. I still have focus here. Long press the exit there. And again, you can go on and play something else. You have the Ataris. Big thing we're gonna to touch up on real quick is the PC games. I basically took every game that could work with the joysticks, the RK sticks, will work here. You do have some multiplayer games, awesome, cool stuff. You do have some two-player games. You have some one-player games. Big thing when it comes to these PC games though, this long press exit doesn't work slash exit like it normally would for other stuff. These PC games, you have to actually exit the actual game itself. This is an actual PC game that gets launched. It's not an emulator, it's a standalone kind of situation. You do have current fighters, um, even some high graphic fighters, your PC does run them very well. That's when you do have a 1080p screen, so we're not doing 4K. You do have, for example, Street Fighter V. You do have Tekken 7. Um, Tekken's usually a, a big one. I have that. Some of them might take you know, a minute to load, which isn't too bad, but uh, we'll do some Street Fighter V, why not? Long press button one. And the big thing on this, when it comes to PC games, you might see this. Whoa, Vic, what happened? Just gotta be patient. 
let it do its thing, it's loading up in the background. Whenever I have like kids, anytime I meet customers with kids, I'm like, just put your hands up. <laughs> hands up, don't move. Let it do its thing. It is launching stuff in the background and then as you can see, you will be a-okay and good to go. Again, this works with the arcade sticks. Very cool. You might get these things about connecting and all that, that's a-okay. You're not gonna be able to connect to the internet on these, so it's okay. I'll get rid of this I agree right now for you. You might see these. Just gotta go ahead and press I agree. And then you'll be able to go into the main menu. This right now is gonna give you the story mode. I will cut and I'll exit the story mode. But then it's also the tutorial, so I don't really wanna do that. Uh, I'd rather you play the tutorial. Maybe you have to learn how to play the buttons and all that. But again, if I long press this exit, nothing happens. Once you get past the tutorial, you have to exit the game. There's a menu and then you exit. I'm gonna actually close this game so you can play the tutorial as if you just started this game. I'll launch another one. We'll do Street Fighter Cross Tekken. If you look very carefully, I have a dot. All the fighting games is in the beginning and then the alphabetical order. I have that on purpose because I have many people that just want to play fighting games. So I'm right now going to launch a Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Uh, and this doesn't really have an intro screen like Street Fighter V did, but at least you'll be able to see it and, and play it and such. But you'll see the quit menu screen on this. So again, you get your Capcom intro. Yes, it says. Awesome, awesome. Let it go, let it skip. Sometimes you gotta watch fully. <laughs> and that's just how it is. So as you can see now, this is mimicking an Xbox controller. So it's like A and B is down here, X and Y, and then L and R. So I, right now I can do a versus battle. My enter button though is the bottom here. Again, it's acting like a Xbox controller. So just gotta keep that in mind. We can do player two, enter, enter. Awesome, awesome. And then we get into picking our fighters. So as you can see, it does work. If I press B, I'm gonna return to the main menu so I won't really do a full game. I don't wanna waste your time. But the big thing is that you have to quit here. If I long press this exit, nothing works. It's basically reading an escape key. So you see that it says return to title. No, I need to actually quit this game. So are you sure you wanna quit? Yes. And then I regain focus. So again, PC games, you just have to exit in the actual game. Some of them do need the escape key though. Um, for example, I know um, uh, I have this game called Horizon Chase, that's a driving game, and the new TMNT, you could hold down escape exit and it'll exit like that. But all in all, there's your PC games. Again, went from MAME only to all this. So you do have, for example, Streets of Rage 4, TMNT, Shredder's Revenge. I even have a couple of new uh, dual stick shooters like this, Ultrashawn, and definitely you'll want to try out Xeno Crisis. But, yeah, awesome. Now, again, you're inside a hyperspin now. If you're done playing or if you need to go to the desktop, you just hold down escape and it's gonna ask you if you wanna exit. Again, just to make sure you understand clearly, if you're inside of a category, I wanna exit, you hold down exit. It's gonna bring you back to the main list. Hold down exit again and then yes. Boom, this is your regular standard desktop. Couple of key things on the desktop. I do have the hyperspin shortcut. So if you ever exit, you have to go back in, you just double click that. I do have down here Team Viewer. If I ever have the Team Viewer in, if you have any issues, I could always connect into your computer, no problem. And then I also do have Fightcade. Fightcade is online arcade. You can play against other people here. I logged out of my account, but basically if you're connected to the internet, I'm not connected right now, there would be a screen here to log in. That's something you could do later on. It's not something you need right away. But basically now you have your desktop. This is a regular computer. You could use your Firefox, you wanna, I wouldn't say check your emails, but you could check your emails and such. Vic, I'm done playing though, I wanna shut down the computer. Yes, you do wanna shut down the computer, don't just unplug it. Again, going back to your power button that's on the right side, you just press it, shut down, give it maybe 30 seconds, let's be safe, 30 seconds, and then you could cut the power to your cabinet. Again, yes, it might be a little overwhelming, it's A-OK, -okay. you're not the only one. It will get some getting used to, but again, now you have almost virtually every game. <laughs> as far as arcade controller friendly, no worries. I'm gonna swap out this player one button for you right now before this goes out. This way you have a brand new player one button. Uh, that's the one thing that kind of sucks with these buttons is that they kind of start fading, especially if the player starts. But there you go. Now again, same thing. We have the cabinet off. If you plug it back in, if you power it on, Again, you can see my screen doesn't show any no signal, but if I just press it, you might hear the PC fan inside. You might hear, you kind of hear like a, just give it a second. Don't, don't spam that button. 
wait like a good 30 seconds, you should see something on the screen and let it do its thing. Again, the program is set to boot on its own as you requested. It just doesn't go into MAME, but it starts with the main MAME wheel. That's a tongue twister right there. But again, your little loading screen is your desktop. Inside of the pictures, I know you're a Mac user, you just let me know. Inside your pictures folder, I have that backup Captain America background, but in, uh, what's the word you said? In honor of your double dragon cabinet that you used to have, I hope you like the little background to it. Again, it's 30 seconds. It's probably gonna be a th long 30 seconds in your, like, you know, when you're antsy to play. Uh, but don't worry, the system will launch. And again, most likely the first time just now, like the first time you exit, you will have to go to the desktop to, you know, input the internet. But as you can see, we're there. Big thing, definitely be sure that your USB connections are all in before you start playing and powering on. Uh, but there you go. Now also, just a quick note, uh, you don't have to exit to the desktop, you could just shut down from here. If I press that button, it'll say shutting down and you're good to go. If you need any help, you know me, I'm very quick on the email, text, whatever you need. And again, if you need any little help, just message me. But I hope you enjoy your new uh, gaming console. Again, please, if you need any help, any even if it's the littlest thing, I'm there to help. <laughs> enjoy, bud.